just going back to kind of your, your relationship with, with Johnny, and obviously loads of the said and loads of written about it. I just I was interested to read a, a newspaper interview with him on, on Sunday where he kind of said he he'd be scared of what it'd be like the prospect of being at Racing um, if if you weren't there yourself. Um, like I don't want to go too deep, but is it kind of a mutually dependent relationship? You seem to be you know bouncing off each other very well over. Uh, well, yeah, we need each other. Yeah, it's like it's a different world. It's very hard to describe to anybody that has played rugby in Ireland before, what the whole setup is like, what the whole system is like, and what the the whole um, club environment is like. It's very, very different. and it's, Every day is a learning day, and it's, every day is a different day, and I'm seeing it from a coach's point of view, Johnny's seeing it from a player's point of view, and I don't know which is more challenging, because Johnny's a player, and he's left, obviously, the comforts of Dublin, and the huge, I suppose, not, um, but how structured Leinster were yeah. and how, he, how highly organised they were. And he's gone to a club where there has been such different abilities between players. It's incredible. And, you know, I'm new to coaching, so I don't know what to expect. And I'm, I have other coaches who, who are very good to me and giving me great opportunities. But at the same time, I'm learning to see how to get the best out of the players and Johnny is the centre of that, there's the language barrier, there's different teams a lot of the weeks, there's home game versus away mentality, like there's, you could write a book about, you know, the first six months alone. Yeah, like it's, I don't know what expectations you would have had when you went over there as a coach because you were new to coaching and you were new yeah. to the environment. <laughs> exactly. Like, okay. So like has it, has it matched whatever expectations you might have? No, had, because... It's completely different. Yeah. And when you might think you're getting it sorted, then two days later it goes pear shaped, and vice versa. When you think you're kind of ready for this, you're ready to snap. You kind of you get a ray of optimism. But I suppose that's involved in sport, you know. So it's it's hugely challenging, hugely frustrating, hugely enjoyable. Just such a concoction of emotions that you kind of you don't know what's going to happen the next day. And I don't know is that a good or a bad thing. <laughs> It's a good enough thing to me, I think. But uh, like you said as well, or kind of, I was talking to you a month ago, there was a prospect of, let's say, three, four Irish players maybe playing alongside, not alongside Johnny, but playing in the top 14 next season. Now there's not going to be anything mm. because they've all signed up with the Irish. You, you, for one, just reading through your columns, you weren't surprised at all about that, that the lads decided to stay home. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't, you know, because It's a big, big decision to leave Ireland, especially if you're an international player playing for Ireland. The only reason you would go, I would think, if that you felt that the IRFU didn't meet your value, as in Johnny's case, and he got an exceptional offer from from a team hoping to achieve something, so he decided to go, but everyone else has decided to stay. And that says an awful lot for the IRFU and the systems they implore. I think players are exceptionally well looked after in Ireland. Mm. They're exceptionally well managed and they're exceptionally well coached so it's easy for me probably to say that now that I left because when I was a player here I was frustrated at times no doubt about it but I think that happens anyone after a certain length of time as well and you always want to see what's out there but um, you know I think it's great that these key players are staying for Ireland we need the best of our, of our players playing in Ireland and being proud of playing for their home team and that's what makes I think a rugby player in Ireland why it's so special is there ever we ever tempted to go abroad to experience life or um, yeah of course you would have thought about it but thinking about it is one thing doing it is com completely different I uh, was part of a very loyal team a very ambitious team a very successful team so for me it was it was uh, more important to stay and try and win things with my teammates yeah like, you, like you're a very ambitious guy as well like, and, and you're just kind of starting out in the kind of coaching path would it, would it be right in saying that ultimately that might lead to maybe coaching once you're across the Yeah, of course, yeah. That doesn't sound any way daunting, you know what I mean? I think hopefully it will become natural sometime. But, um, you know, I suppose I've only left and gone seven months, you know what I mean? The hardest thing was probably going, but I wanted to go. I needed to go to get out of Cork and I needed to challenge myself in a different environment. I needed to learn. There were so much things that I needed to do, so if I'm gone now, I may as well stay away for a bit, I think, you know. Yeah, just, just a couple of things to finish off on. Like, um, obviously, we also had a documentary about yourself uh, earlier on in the month. Um, like, I, I read that you said that you kind of one regret that maybe it didn't come out that how much you enjoyed rugby. But did, did you enjoy the documentary besides, or kind of where you No, yeah, sorry. Yeah, of course. 
I think it was just when I watched that was probably my initial reaction maybe this guy did he smile enough did he take it too seriously did he you know people accuse me of caring too much you can never care too much you know when you play for your country play for Munster it means so much to me you have to win you know what I mean that's why I play it and uh, I, I, you know what I mean I think if you for the last four years that's where my mindset was probably because I was on the team, then I got off the team and I just wanted to prove to myself and other people I'm going to get back on the team for the World Cup and that's exactly what happened. So after that I was very happy, very mellow and just trying to hang on then for as long as I could at the end and then, as I said, it just happened quickly getting left out of the squad and that was a great way in hindsight for it to happen rather than dying a slow death. But previously to that, I, you know, I had played for Ireland over 100 times probably. So if you were to, you know what I mean, capture my emotions from 2001 maybe to 2009 or, or whatever it was to be sure I enjoyed it a great crack a great teammates I love the dressing room I love the crack I love slagging people I love that team environment gets me going you know what I mean and that's I think what I miss the most just the banter the dressing room people think you know it, it probably was good crack it was unbelievable crack you had to be there to understand you know what I mean people yeah. don't <laughs> unless you get, kind of get the jokes it's not as funny but when you're there like we had some great great times you know and I'm very grateful for them speaking of your time in Munster are you optimistic welcome for the yeah I am yeah I think they've been it's, it's really pleasing when you know the form for the Magners league last year wasn't good enough it got addressed over the summer obviously by the players and they the management and they've worked on it and now they've been really successful this season and you know obviously there's a disappointment in in Edinburgh in the first Heineken Cup game but they've uh, regrouped and um, you know I think they've showed their, their mental fortitude and that's always important and I think you know there, there's a huge not huge but there's a serious possibility of, of Munster winning a Heineken Cup this year and, and, and that's that's very exciting, you know. Yeah, definitely. Just lastly, um, I know you've got links with the Miami Dolphins in the past. Are you a big NFL fan? Are you watching Super Bowls on the night? I enjoyed the NFL from just a um, psychological point of view. Just the different mindset of different players is hugely fascinating. I don't know much about American football or the positions or anything like that, but I've watched a few documentaries. Obviously, um, probably Jerry was people first person who introduced me to them, but it's just... It's just fascinating to see what how some players have to prepare to get in the zone to perform, and uh, I just find the mental side of sport very interesting. You're not gonna call it Denver, Denver, Seattle. No, I actually <laughs> no idea. Uh, it's, uh, it's Cheers. Cheers. Come on, buddy. Thanks, lads.